In today's video I will talk about the anterolateral ligament of the knee, the ALL, and the accessory iliotibial band meniscal ligament. So both ligaments are relatively new and by the end of the video you will know what they both have to do with Swiss chocolate. Alright, so before we jump into the topic, make sure you hit the subscribe button if you haven't already, because it really helps me out in the long run. It doesn't cost you anything and it would be really appreciated. So hit it now and also give the video a like. So both metrics are helping me to spread out the word and show my videos to more and more people that are interested in knee MRI or radiology or musculoskeletal radiology in general. So it's the ALL versus AIML. A few years ago there was uh, a big, well it was not so big, but uh, different news outlets posted about a new ligament that was discovered in the knee uh, in Belgium, or at least the Belgian surgeons published this in the Journal of Anatomy. So this is from the publication and I have the link to this publication in the description down below. What is the anterolateral ligament? The anterolateral ligament is an additional lateral ligament here that is running a little bit more oblique and anteriorly to the lateral collateral ligament. They have a similar origin and especially on MRI it's not really possible to separate and then the ligament runs down this way. Now once this anatomic publication was out the radiology literature um, uh, followed up with descriptions of this ligament and this is from a journal uh, from an article in AGR 2015 and you can see here nicely this kind of fracture, ovulsion fracture, the second fracture, you can see here after motorcycle crash. And I have also the link to this publication in the description down below. It's freely available for everybody online. And you see the arrow here where it points to the ALL. And we will now see that this is just one part of the ALL actually. Then here in a second patient, the fracture is this time a little bit less obvious. But nevertheless, you can see the ALL here or this kind of ligament that seems to run right there. So this is basically the anatomic description, but all you actually need to know is this image here where you can see the fibular head, we have the tibia and we have the femur, we have Gerdi's tubercle here, this is the tuberosity's tibia. And the ALL in yellow here has a similar origin, it's a little bit more like anteriorly and uh, distally compared to the L LCL according to the anatomic description but on MR it's not separable. So AL runs anteriorly down here and it's inserting about in the middle between Gerdi's tubercle and the fibular head. So this is the distance and in the middle the ALL inserts. So if we are now turning this around you can see that the ligament is a little bit anteriorly and it's now having this kind of funny shape here and we will see in a minute that uh, why it is. Gerdi's tubercle here and now you can understand the second fracture is actually not an avulsion of Gerdi's tubercle. It's more a little bit more laterally and it nicely fits this kind of image here where we have this kind of avulsion there at this level. So now let's zoom in in this part here. If you go into the articles there is a little bit more detail also available. First of all the ALL has kind of two different components and depending on which illustration you look at it's a little bit different we will see that in a minute so the proximal portion inseparable from the lcl it's going down it then has a meniscal branch which goes to the base of the body of the meniscus here on the lateral portion here this way then it has a tibial branch which is from here from the meniscus going down and then you have the lateral inferior genicular artery and the corresponding vein sometimes two or three dots here uh, at this level here, just beneath the LCL, but above this kind of ligament. Meniscal branch or meniscofemoral component, both has been used in the literature, so whatever you prefer. So you can see here these two components. We have the tibial branch and the meniscal branch or the meniscofemoral branch and meniscal tibial branch or component, whatever you want. Now there's an issue here with this image because if you go back to the original article from I don't know 2014-15 um, by the Belgian surgeons that I mentioned initially they describe after sharply detaching the ALL from the meniscus the lateral inferior geniculate artery and vein were invariably found situated in between the lateral meniscal rim and the ALL 
at the level of the joint line. So if you read this, what actually is the case, you can see it here. We've got the lateral femoral epicondyle, the origin, LCL, ALL here on a lateral aspect of the knee, ALL running down, and the inferior, uh, the lateral inferior genicular artery and the veins are actually running beneath or deep to the ligament between the lateral meniscus and this kind of ligament. And this is now here in a more of a coronal section and you can see or photograph, you can see the ALL marked here. It's basically crossing these vessels, but then they describe that there is a tibial branch and a meniscal branch. So the meniscal branch is here with the star going from the ALL down to the meniscal space. Then this is the lateral meniscus and there is a tibial branch which is going to the meniscus, then joins back with the ALL. And one has to assume based from these images that the ALL actually is crossing over these vessels. So basically it has a funny shape, something like this, I imagine. I'm, I'm not really sure because this portion here has to be very, very thin, but it looks very prominent here. So I don't know, there is some mismatch. So what should be the case is probably something like this. We've got the ALL, we've got the meniscal branch, tibial branch, and the lateral inferior genicular vessels here, meniscus, and there should be something crossing over here, not like in the graph that I showed you initially, where we just have this kind of ligament beneath these vessels here. So this is an other article from 2017, which is also covering the ALL, and you can see here the origin, and they nicely show this, that it's not really separable from the fibular collateral ligament, which is the same thing as the lateral collateral ligament. So both have basically here the same origin. And then, at least on MRI, then we've got the meniscal branch going down here. We've got the lateral inferior genicular artery. And you can see it runs deep to it. So, but then one structure is running over here. And just based on this image, it's not clearly what it is. Now, they also show in the same article, which is also available online, uh, the ALL on cross-sectional imaging, where you have this very tiny ligament here. So it's not really a very obvious structure on MRI. So in 2019, then, there was a publication by a surgeon from the Balagrist University Hospital, and they discovered another ligament in the knee, at the, also at the lateral side, and they named it the accessory iliotibial band meniscal ligament, which is not so easy to pronounce. It's called the AIML, which is an abbreviation which is basically already taken by other structures, but uh, that's not the topic today. And yeah, that's basically what I pointed out with the chocolate at the beginning. So Belgium chocolate and Swiss chocolate is one competition, but also discovering ligaments around the knee. It's basically important is again the illustration. It's a very prominent structure running from the iliotibial band down to the anterior horn of the lateral meniscus. And it's inserting into the meniscus here a little bit more anteriorly. And you can see the lateral collateral ligament is distant of it. And this is the Gerdes tubercle. And this is the iliotibial band. So since last week's video, three new people joined me on Patreon and that's Saurab, Marsha and Matthew. Thanks guys, thanks for your contribution to the channel and also a big thank you to all my other Patreons for their continuing support. It's now 90 people and I have a stretch goal. If I reach 100 Patreons, I will start doing interview uh, or interview series with other radiologists. So that should be fun and I hope that I will find somebody to interview. In case you're interested, uh, just text me a message and we can see what we can arrange. So thanks guys, and if you don't know what Patreon is, go check it out, it's, the link is in the description down below. You get exclusive video content and you have a little bit more uh, interaction with me and you can ask me questions, etc. And with that, let's move on. So let's look at this MR of an 11 year old patient and we just go through the big structures first. So iliotibial band down to Curtis tubercle here. More posteriorly, we've got the lateral collateral ligament running in this kind of orientation a little bit obliquely down here to the head and on the transfer section you can appreciate also the lateral collateral ligament here going down here 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 zack and the uh, iliotibial band so we now know that the uh, ALL inserts just between 
the two insertions. So we got one here, one here. So the ALL should technically insert somewhere at this level. So we can go up to this level now here. And what we now see here is this structure here, which is now nicely seen because we've got a joint diffusion after a trauma. And you can see, let me go big, how it comes from the meniscus going down, inserting here onto this lateral aspect here. So technically this could be the tibial branch of the ALL. At the same time we can see here the meniscal branch, or at least portion of it, something like this. Now things get a little bit more complicated if we look at the lateral inferior genicular artery and its veins here. So the diagrams or the anatomic dissection showed that we have basically these vessels between the ALL and the meniscus, so there should be ALL down here. Now, you could argue maybe this one would be the ALL. Let's go up to this area here. This one, but that's actually the ITB. So this, to me, this is still part of the iliotibial band. And maybe this one here, if you go a little bit more posteriorly, we could then argue maybe this one is part of the ALL, this more superficial portion, which is probably the case, right? So, and then you can see it here. This would also, let me just zoom in, explain why it's anteriorly to the lateral collateral ligament, which is this one here. And they say it has a common origin, maybe it separates here, so maybe this one here is it. It's, it's really hard. So this patient has a second fracture, as you can see here. We have the avulsion of the second fragment here. And we can now try to see what actually inserts there. But before we do that, let's just go again through the big structures. Zooming out a little bit, we have the iliotibial band. And you can see it's inserting onto Gerardi's tubercle and it's not causing the second fracture, at least not. it's not an avulsion up here. Then more posteriorly, we have the lateral collateral ligament going down here, blending in with the biceps femoris tendon, and then inserting here onto the fibular head. So we can go down here, lateral collateral ligament here, this one, and iliotibial band. And you can see the second fragment lies actually exactly in between, where we would expect the insertion of the ALL. And if we are going up here, we were now saying that this origin of the FCL or the LCL and the ALL is more or less the same. So potentially some of these structures here would be parts of the ALL. If we go a little bit more anteriorly here and it looks a little bit thickened, so maybe it was also injured together with uh, the second fracture and the ACL tear in this patient here. And then onto this fragment we would expect the tibial branch to be. Uh, it's now a traumatic setting so we can't really see it so it's probably also injured. But it's not that simple because if you now start at the bottom here, so we have the fragment, this one. If you are now scrolling proximally and you look, look at these fibers here. So at least some of them, of this area here, they are attaching onto this fragment. And if you scroll up here, you can see they are still portion, a portion of the fascia, or if you will, from the wider iliotibial band. But even here on these coronals, it looks like the iliotibial band has some components attaching here onto the second fracture. So what's very interesting in this case is if you go a little bit more anteriorly now, you can see this kind of thick structure here on the lateral aspect, which is seemingly running from the iliotibial band down to the body or to the base of the meniscus. And this is now the AIML that I described earlier. So this patient basically have, uh, has both things. So this is again the same patient a few weeks after the initial trauma and we can still see the second fracture. We can now 
maybe a little bit better imagine the tibial branch of the ALL going down here, attaching onto this fragment. We can see anteriorly still the AIML, which wasn't injured, and it seems to be blending in here with the iliotibial band. It's not the most beautiful case, and if you look on the axials, you don't really see the origin maybe here, here going down onto the meniscus, this one, but it's not so obvious. So here in another patient, we can appreciate the anatomy as well. And you can see here lateral compartment, meniscus, and we can see or we know now that they refer to this as the tibial branch more posteriorly. So this is popliteus tendon, so we need to go a little bit more anteriorly. So there will be somewhere the meniscal branch. And if you go even more anteriorly, you have something that could be the AIML like this one here. So probably they are also a little bit blending in together. Not quite sure. But what I think is very interesting to see in this case is that we have not just the tibial branch and the potential, maybe in this case, degenerated meniscal branch, but we can see a ligament like structure here that is kind of connecting the two. And we have the vessels, the lateral inferior genicular artery and veins below this one. So below the ALL and the base of the meniscus. So I think this is a nice example that this is probably the ALL going down this way. And we have the tibial branch and the meniscal branch, as I have shown you in the illustration. And this is certainly not the ITB because that's more superficially going down. And you can see this also on the transverse section. So we have here the origin of the lateral collateral ligament. If you're scrolling down, the ALL should go anteriorly a little bit. We can see it here. So this kind of black structure here going down, 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 and then inserting here on this level, just halfway between the iliotibial band and the lateral collateral ligament. So that's it for this week. I hope you learned something new. If so, hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and see you next week.